Sometimes in Django, you need different parts of your application to communicate with each other and to respond to different events that are being sent. And that's where signals come in. And these are a part of the Django framework and they allow you to connect events to actions. So basically signals allow senders to notify a set of receivers that some particular event has taken place. And they're especially useful when many pieces of code might be interested in a particular event. Now we're going to discuss signals in this video. We're going to implement a couple of them as well. And we're going to discuss the caveats of using signals a little bit in this video. Now before we get started, I want to highlight this Black Friday promo from Datacamp. And with the link in the description and in the comments, you can get 50% off of everything on Datacamp. And this is especially useful if you want to learn Python, ChatGPT, Power BI, SQL, and a variety of other tools. So check that link out. Datacamp's an amazing platform for learning these tools. Now let's get back to the video and we're going to dive in and start learning about signals. I've got the documentation open here. So Django includes a signal dispatcher and it helps decoupled apps get notified when actions occur elsewhere in the framework. Now if we look at the code here, you can see that we've imported a signal here and that's the setting changed signal. So when you change the settings in a Django application, that actually sends that event and you can then listen for that and respond to the settings changing. So that's an example of something that's built in to Django. And there are also a variety of other signals. So I'm going to go to this page of the documentation. So we have signals that belong to models. So for example, if we look at the right hand side, before you save a model, that is going to send the pre-save signal and we also have a post-save signal. So that means that when you save models in Django, you can actually respond to those actions and perform any additional updates that are required. And as well as save, there are signals for deleting, for example, pre-delete and post-delete. We're going to use one of them later in the video, along with the post-save signal. And as well as model signals, there are management signals for migrations. So before you run the migrate command and after, you can wire into those and perform different actions. And also request started and request finished. These are signals that are hooked into Django's request processing. And then you can respond to actions, for example, after a request has finished. Now what I'm going to do is go to VS Code where I have a project open. And I've defined a user here that's inheriting from Django's abstract user. And we're going to extend this user in a second with a new field. And we've also told Django in settings.py that this is the user model we want to use. And you can use the auth user model setting for that. And once you've defined that, you can run the make migrations command and migrate to create your database with that user model. Now what I want to do in the core application here is create a file called signals.py. And you can see I already have that here. So let's open that file just now and we're going to write some code here and define some signals. Now let's go back to the Django documentation. So to receive a signal, we register what's called a receiver function and that's done using the signal.connect method. The receiver function is what is called when the given signal is sent. So if we look at the signature here, we have a signal.connect function and that takes the receiver function as the first argument. So that's the callback function that will be connected to the signal. And then we have the sender as the second argument. And that specifies a particular sender that we want to receive signals from. And we'll look at that in a second. And then we have a couple of extra arguments here. The important one I want to look at is dispatch UID. And that's a unique ID for the signal receiver in cases where duplicate signals might be sent. So there's a link to this page just below the video. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see how we define the function. So we have a function here called my callback. And then if we scroll down further, we can connect that using that connect method. So we take the signal, in this case, it's request finished, and we call dot connect, and we pass that receiver function into that method. An alternative way to do this is using a receiver decorator in Django. That's what we're going to define in a second. And you can see that we have the function we had before called my callback, and that's decorated using the receiver function from the Django.dispatch package. What I want to do now is define a signal that's going to send an email to the user when they sign up. So we have this user model here. Let's import that into signals.py. And we're also going to import the receiver decorator that we just saw. And then what we can do below here is we can write a receiver decorator. That's going to take a signal as the first argument. And the signal is going to be the post save signal. Now, if we want to send an email to a user when they register, what we want to do here is after the user is saved into the database, we then want to access that user's email and send our welcome email to that user. So we need to use the post save signal because the user has to exist in the database when we actually send this email. So that's the signal that we're going to use here. And we can import that signal at the top from the db.models.signals package. And the function that we're going to decorate with this receiver decorator, we don't want to call this every time any model is saved. So we can send a sender in there and that's going to be the user model. 
and that means the function is only going to be called after the user model is saved. And finally, I'm going to pass that dispatch UID. We're going to give it a UID of send welcome email, and then we can create the function now called send welcome email. And to find out the arguments for the signal, what we can do is go back to the documentation on model signals. And we have a list of these on the right hand side. And the one we're using is post save. And as it says here, it's sent at the end of the save method. And you can see the arguments sent with that signal. We have the sender, which is the model class. And then we also have the actual instance of the model that is being saved. So the instance is going to be the actual user itself. And we also have a Boolean being passed in, and that's the created flag. And that's going to be true if a new record was created in the database. And that's what we want here, as we're going to see in a second. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to accept these arguments for sender, instance and created. And what we want to do here is send a welcome email when the user is created. Now, just to test this is working, I'm going to do a print statement here of signal fired. And what we want to do is send the email if the user has been created in the database. So we're going to create an if statement here and we're going to check if created evaluates to true. And if that is true, we're going to call the send mail function in Django and we need to import that at the top. So let's import that from django.core.mail and then we can call send mail here and I'm going to pass some arguments into this. So the send mail function has the subject and the message as the first two parameters. So the subject is going to be welcome and then we have a message of thank you for signing up. We then have the from email, which is in this case going to be admin at django.com. And of course, on a real application, you would have a real email address. And then we have a recipient list. And you can see that that's a list in Python. And we're using the instance that's being saved. And we're accessing the email field on that instance. So that's going to send the email to that user. Once we've written the signal, I'm going to bring back the sidebar here. And we need to go to apps.py within the core application. This is a file where we have the app config subclass. And in order to register the signals, we're going to create a function here or a method rather called ready. And then within that method, what we're going to do from the current application is import the signals module and that will register these signals. And hopefully that means that when we create a new user, the signal that we have here is going to be fired and it's going to send that welcome email to the user. Now, during development, we don't want to be emailing any users. So I'm going to go to the documentation of Django here on email backends. In development, we want to set an email backend here of the console. So I'm going to scroll down here to this console backend and let's copy this and add it to settings.py. So back in VS Code, we'll go to settings.py and right at the bottom here, we'll create that email backend and that's the console backend. Basically, it's going to print the email to the console and that's not going to send any emails to your users when you're developing the application. So let's test this out. We're going to start the Django development server and we're going to go to localhost 8000. And if I go to localhost 8000 slash register, I built a super simple register page here and you can see it looks horrendous, but what it's going to do is allow us to register a new user. So I'm going to fill in these fields just now. So I've now filled the details in and importantly, I've got an email address here. This is only going to work if you have an email address because you can't send an email to the instance email address if there is not one in the database. So let's now submit this registration form. And what we're going to see here is that we're redirected to a login page. But if I go back to the console here, you can see if I expand this and let's minimize the sidebar here, you can see that the email has been sent. We've got a message or rather a body of thanks for signing up. And we have the welcome subject in the email. And this is from that admin user and it's been sent to the email address that's associated with the user that's just signed up. So that's how we can use a signal to define a function here that's going to send a welcome email to a user and that's only going to be fired if the user has been created for the first time. So if you're working with the post save signal, this created flag is very useful if you only want to perform actions when the user or whatever the model is has been created for the first time. And alternatively, if you wanted to do things only when the model is updated, you can check if not created evaluates to true. Now I want to see another example here of using a signal. So what I'm going to do is go back to models.py and this user model, let's say we're building some kind of employment website and that could be something like a job board, which you see all the time on Reddit. So what I'm going to do for the user is add a new field here called CV and that's going to be a file field. And we need to import the Django models at the top here. And for the file field, we provide an upload to parameter. And we set that to a directory under the media root where we want these files to be uploaded to. And what I'm going to do here is set a directory called CVs. And importantly, I'm going to add null equals true here because we already have a user in the database and we want to allow blank to be true here as well. So let's say on our employment or our job website, 
the CV field is optional. We can allow users to apply for jobs even if they don't have a CV, so we're not gonna make it a required field by setting these two parameters. Now, after changing models, we need to go to the terminal here and I'm gonna stop the server and run make migrations. You can see it's added that field in the migration file and then we can run the migrate command and that's gonna change the SQLite database. Now, for the file uploads, we're gonna send them to a CVs directory under the media root, but we need to actually go to settings.py and set the media root itself. So what we're gonna do here is set a setting here and it's gonna be media root and we're gonna set that to the base directory and then let's create a media directory underneath that. And much like the static URL, we're also gonna set a media URL here and that's gonna be set to slash media. So for documents that are uploaded by users, it's the media root, that is the root directory for those. So we're setting that here and then on the sidebar, what I'm gonna do if I minimize everything is create a media directory here. And what we expect to see when we upload a file is that file should appear under the CVs directory within that media directory. Now at the bottom, I'm gonna start the Django server again, and I'm gonna to go to the Django admin now. And if you need to access the admin, you can create a super user in order to do that. So I'm now on the admin and we're going to go to the users. And you can see we have the admin user that I'm logged in as, as well as that user bug bytes that we registered with a second ago. Now, if I go to the admin user, what I'm gonna do is click that user and we're gonna to go to the bottom and you can see the CV file field. I'm gonna choose a file just now. And I've set that to a file called local config. And what I'm gonna do is click save here. And then you can go back to the admin user. And if we go to the very bottom, you can see that we currently have a file for the CV. Now, once you add the file, if you go back to the file system and go to the media directory, you can see that it's created that CVs directory. And that particular file that was uploaded is now present in that directory. Now I want to highlight an issue with Django file fields. And that's that if we delete the record from the database, the actual file on the file system is not going to be removed. So let's see that in action. If we go back to the Django admin, I'm going to go back to the users page and let's go to the second user here and go to the very bottom. And I'm gonna upload a new file here for that user. And I've got a file here called transactions.json. So I'm going to save this. And if we then select the user and we delete that user from the database, if we get rid of that user and go back to the file system, you can see within the CVs directory, we have that JSON file, it's still there. So even though we've deleted the record or the row that's associated with this CV, the actual file remains here. So we want to clean this up. So we're going to implement that using a signal. So let's go back to signals.py and at the top here, we're going to import another signal from the models and that's the post delete signal. And because we're going to clean up the file system, I'm going to import the OS module from Python as well. Now we need to define another receiver here. So let's grab that receiver decorator and the signal this time is gonna be post delete. And again, the sender, the model itself is going to be the user model. And let's define a function called delete associated file. We're gonna take the sender and we're also going to take the instance as arguments. And we can get all of the other keyword arguments by using that notation there. And I'm gonna add a comment here. We're going to delete the file from the file system if that file exists. Now the instance is going to be the user and that has a CV. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna check if instance.cv evaluates to true. In other words, has the user got a CV in the file system? And if they do, we can check os.path and we're going to use the isFile function and we're gonna check that instance.cv.path is a file. So in Django, instance.cv is a file field, and to get the actual path to that file, we can use .path here, and then we can pass that into the isFile function. And only then can we call os.remove, and we're actually going to remove this path here, so let's copy it and paste it into the os.remove function. So basically what this signal is intended to do is that when a user is deleted, and we know it's being deleted because we have the post delete signal, this receiver function here is going to be called. It's gonna check that the user instance has a CV, and it's also gonna check that that CV is a file. And then if that's the case, it's gonna call os.remove and pass the path into that in order to remove it from the file system. So let's save this and we're gonna test it out. And I'm actually gonna restart the server here at the bottom before we do this. So let's go back to the Django admin and I'm going to add a user at the top right here. So you can fill in these fields in order to add the user to the system. So I've now got this user called admin2. So let's go to the user. And if we go to the bottom here, we can upload a CV. So this time I'm uploading transactions.csv. If we save this and go back to this page here, we're gonna see that if we go back to VS Code and look at the sidebar and go to the media directory, we now have transactions.csv. 
Now we're hoping that this time when we delete the user, transactions.csv is going to be deleted as well. And that's because this signal here is going to fire after the user is deleted using the post delete signal. And it's going to remove, hopefully, the transactions.csv file. So let's test that out. If we go back to the Django admin and delete admin2, we can click yes here. And let's see what happens if we go back to the file system. You can see that transactions.csv is no longer present. So that CSV has been deleted. And this is cleaning up the file system after we delete the user model. So any record that has that file field or indeed an image field, if you want to clean up the file system after the record is deleted from the database, you can actually do that. And you can do it by hooking into these signals such as post delete. So that's a practical example showing the post delete signal. And we saw one earlier with the post save signal. There's actually a package in Django for deleting and cleaning up the file system after files have been removed. And that package is called Django Cleanup. If you're interested in seeing a video on this, let me know in the comments. If we go down to the readme here, what this is going to do is it's going to automatically delete files for the file field and image field as well as subclasses. And as it says in the section on how does it work, Django Cleanup is connecting a variety of different signals here to signal handlers for each model and in installed apps that has any file fields. So if you're interested on more on Django Cleanup, let me know in the comments. And many Django packages have signals, for example, Django OAuth. And as it says here, different signals are emitted during authentication flows. For example, you can track when users log in, when they log out, and when they sign up, as well as things like when passwords are set and changed by the users and reset. And there's also signals for when confirmation emails are sent, when email addresses are changed in the database, and so on. And that's in the regular accounts package. And there's also a social accounts package that has some signals as well. So if we go to that page, you can see signals here for pre-social login, for when a social account is added and updated, and finally, when a social account is removed. These are all signals. You can hook into these and perform any kind of customized logic during these workflows. Now, I mentioned caveats on signals at the start of the video, so let's go back to the documentation. And just at the top section here, there is a warning in Django. Signals give the appearance of loose coupling, but they can quickly lead to code that's hard to understand, adjust, and debug. So when it's possible, you should opt for directly calling the handling code rather than dispatching via a signal. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have complete control of the code, you might want to avoid using signals where possible. They are useful for decoupling different applications though. So for example, if you're writing a third-party Django package and you want to expose some signals that other packages or other apps can hook into, then that's a valid use case for sure. And signals are very useful, as you can see in Django Olaf, as they allow other Django apps that don't necessarily have control of the code to hook into different parts of the workflow and perform useful actions. So that's been an introductory video on signals. If you're interested in more, let me know in the comments. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, check out this Black Friday sale on Datacamp. We've got a link in the top pinned comment. And if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked as well. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.